Hey guys, it's the captain here, and you are watching Anderson's TV, and we've got a new show for you. Uh, we don't even have a name for it really yet, uh, so we're going to call it Anderton's Sessions, and it's where we invite uh, local bands that we know through the store to come in, chat about their their band and stuff, and do a number, uh, play a little number for you. So I'm really pleased to, to introduce you guys to a band called A Tiptoe. Um, and we have got here, we've got Dave, we've got Ian, and we've got uh, Adam and Simon. Um, and they are a four-piece band uh, who, uh, from Guildford, or originally from Guildford. Uh, so thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks no problem. Tell us a little bit then. Uh, we'll start with Dave, I think. Okay, so cool. You're the singer, right? Yeah. So tell us a little about uh, a Tiptoe and you know how you guys met. Uh, so we met uh, when we were all studying in Guildford. Um, uh, yeah, we kind of, uh, well, initially it was uh, Ian, uh, Simon, and our previous bassist, James. Um, everyone kind of, uh, they started jamming some ideas together, uh, more akin to like, uh, much more closer to like a math rock kind of style. Um, and eventually they kind of were looking for a vocalist. So I joined a few months after, once they had a couple songs um, or instrumentals mm -hmm. under their belts. Um, but yeah, essentially, essentially it just came from us kind of knowing each other at university and going from there really awesome now you mentioned math rock i did so for the uh, uninitiated maybe ian wants to discuss like, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Is, what is math rock uh math rock is a genre of rock that messes around with time signatures quite a lot okay yeah uh i think that's like the main focus of it so um, is what would you is it like sort of tech metal math rock is that is are they quite different or um, similar? obviously both very techy but um again the techno is a subgenre of metal Math rock can be anything from chilled out to fairly okay. heavy. Um, Biffy Clyro have like math rock elements to them. They're older stuff. Yeah, using like seven, eight, fifteen, sixteen stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. So we're gonna get some of this on a cajon, are we? We're gonna get some, <laughs> some seven, <laughs> eight, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's this is this is this is cool. And mm -hmm. and so are you playing uh, all original material then? Yes. Yeah. All original. Okay, and have, have you? What can people kind of see about uh, a tiptoe? You know, you got albums or? Yeah, we've got um, two EPs out. Cool. Uh, one uh, we released in May. Was it May? Yeah, May. May, yeah. and it's called Adventure, mm -hmm. and that's out through uh, a local record label in Guildford called Failure by Design Records. They're really cool. Um, yeah, so we've got that uh, previous EP called Pages Apart, yeah. and then actually a third one, which was our first one, uh, called Marabunta. Yeah. Um, and each sound has progressed to be a bit more streamlined, I suppose. Yeah, a bit more yeah. well-rounded. And mm -hmm. groove-centric. Yeah. Okay. I'd definitely say we've moved away a little bit from the math rock sound, so mm -hmm. yeah, don't expect like all crazy weird stuff today just yet. But <laughs> there are still, kind of like with Biffy Clyro, there are still maybe, elements. Probably. Maybe now would be a good time to take a little uh, watch of these guys in action on YouTube from a show that they did recently. Um, so, uh, so you're not the original bass player. I'm not. Is that no, so? I'm, I'm an imposter. Is there a story <laughs> about how the original bass player was, you know, removed in some catastrophic accident? You know, like a proper <laughs> rock. <laughs> you, you know, sort of. No, it was or, not very rock and roll. Oh, really? No. So, how did you get the gig? Um, well, also, I've been at uni with these guys for quite a while. Um, well, certainly quite a while. The entire length of our course. It turns out. Um, and yeah, it also been all been made to play together a bit. Um, and when James, the original bass player, is kind of is basically a bit too busy with his with trails, he'll he'll know. Mm -hmm. Amazing um, local punk band. And uh, so yeah, the guys asked me if I wanted to come on board because yeah, James was just too busy really. He couldn't. 
the two things were too much, too busy. Um, so yeah, I come board and, and filled his boots. Or cool, try man. to at least. Yeah. Cool. Are you filling them? Uh, <laughs> and, Sorry, James. And I'm guessing. So if, if we go to the talk drums to me because I, my, I've got a, I've come from a family of drummers. Uh, dad, granddad, brother, everything. Uh, my cousin is probably the only real, what I would consider to be like, you know, sort of a uh, like a math rock tech metal. You know, like a, he's a he'll he'll buy a new Periphery album and just sit and learn all the you know the weird stuff. Yeah. What's that like as a as a drummer? You know, because it is. What what's it like when you, you when you sort of go you listen to like classic feel drummers from the seventies or whatever and they've got you know John Bonham and and um, the guy from Free, what's his name? Come on, help me out here. I, what was the drummer from Free? Rogers? That, no, that was Paul Rogers. Uh, what was his name? I can't remember the name of the drummer actually. But yeah, he's great. Anyway, <laughs> what it, where he could literally play like you know two notes a bar yeah, and it, and it would really just simple. be like yeah. super cool. How, you know, stylistically then. So what got you into playing? You know, much more complex set of rhythms well I never really uh, set out to join this kind of band it was just I was friends with Ian and wanted to jam with him and I kind of fell into it but I think it's the same approach really I always try to make whatever I'm playing groove and I just play off whatever Ian's doing on guitar like that's normally the start of the songs where I guess in more like classic feel type scenarios you play off the bass player mm -hmm. a bit more but here it's very guitar orientated um, and I don't really think like oh I'm going to put some really crazy time signature or thing in, in this spot. It's just doing whatever's appropriate for the song. Um, and yeah, I try not to be too flashy. I try and make it understated, yeah. even though it's something that is quite technical. Um, and yeah, just make it fit the song and fit the vocal, which at the end of the day is still the most important thing. Cool. All right. So Ian, then if you're, if, if the guitar's very, sorry, if the band's very guitar centric and yeah. you're the kind of the, the sort of almost like the rhythmical leader, if you like, would you describe the, the sort of music like that? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of our music now, like Simon said, is a uh, it's very groove orientated. I think, uh, especially if I'm writing a riff, I don't ever set out to write something deliberately in another time signature. It's just if I'm jamming and it comes out like that. Yeah, you know that's cool. But then um, if I create a drum beat on Logic for a demo, I'll send it over to Simon as like a rough idea. Yeah, sometimes, but I always want to make sure that someone who's listening can nod their head to it. Because um, yeah, I suppose. I like using the term like unobviously technical. Yeah. So that anyone that's listening can enjoy it. Yeah. But then, if someone were to listen to it a second time and notice something, they can appreciate appreciate it even further. further. Oh, that's yeah. that's cool. I mean, I I like that because uh, I I struggle with. Um, I remember I had to. I got the opportunity to interview Misha Mansour um, at the back end of last year, and I, or I think it was back end of last year, and I did like a, a solid week of listening to Periphery so that I was kind of prepared and could ask him sensible questions. And it just <laughs> me up, basically. You know, it's like, it's, you can't, it, 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 you, you've got to be into it. You know, it's not music to just sort of think. So is yours, do you, do you think you, you try to make yours more accessible? Um, try to, don't know if it's working. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, try that, try to kind of make it accessible. So, Dave, tell us about, and again, you can sort of talk on behalf of the four of you, advice, uh, some advice for, uh, you know, people who are, you know, perhaps in a similar situation, an aspiring kind of, you know, bunch of musicians who've, you know, they've, 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 they've learnt to play their instruments, mm -hmm. they're, they're, presumably, how much time are you putting into this versus trying to, you know, work for a living and trying to get that balance between, you know, having any money and being able to, you know, get a roof over your head or whatever versus your commitment to the band? Mm, I mean, it's, it can be very difficult. It was obviously much easier when we all kind of lived in Guildford. Um, it has become harder now we all live in like a different town. Like um, myself and Simon, we both live like North, well, he lives in North London, mm -hmm. I live in Watford. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Ian and Adam are both like South of London, so. Practice can be difficult. They can be very like far and few between. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's just perseverance. It's just actually having the drive to see that through. Being able to say, okay, look, we need to practice. We need to get some things down. We need to get ideas down. Start writing. Like, if you really, if you, if it's something that you really want to do, you will end up finding the time mm -hmm. and making a way of actually making it happen. Um, but yeah. Do you think you got? Do you think you've set like a? You know, we're gonna do it till we're. 30 or we're gonna do it till we're whatever and then just sort of go do you know what by that time or or do you think this will just be something you'll do forever and 
or you know, as long as you're enjoying it? It's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think as long as we're having fun, it's good. Yeah. yeah, I think the moment that you stop having fun with it is the moment where you either need to reassess and change something or perhaps call it a day. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, like if, if you're not having fun doing it, then there's, there's no point. Awesome. So I'm going to quickly whiz around because we're a music store. I'm interested to hear what you guys all play in terms of the, the gear you normally use. Yeah. So let's start with you, Ian. What's your rig? Okay, oh, I um, <laughs> okay. I used to use a Mexican Fender Strat. Yep. And I got it when I was 11 years old from a car boot sale for 60 quid. It was wicked. Uh, yep. It was like a 50th anniversary. Thing awesome. And it was cool. And I've had that for 14 years, but the damage has got worse. So I've had to retire her. And um, Paul Jones, who I believe does work for... Rob Chapman. Oh, Pablo. Pablo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pablo. yeah. He built me a guitar. Yeah. And it's, it's beautiful. It's awesome. Like, uh, yeah. One piece all the body, stained walnut brown with a black scratch plate, maple nick. It's very nice. Cool. And I run that through a Cornford Roadhouse 30. Great amp. Um, yeah, I bought that from him. Yeah, great amp. Um, and then an array of pedals. <laughs> a number of pedals. You're, you're a big pedal, you're kind of an experimental pedal guy. Yeah, yeah, no. Awesome. I love, I love pedals. Is that your pedal board over there? Over there, wherever it's yes, gone? Yes. It well, is. we'll take a photograph of that and we'll insert that in there cool. so you can see Ian's right. pedal board. Nice. Um, do we, you can tell me what microphone you use if you want. No, to. well, I play guitar as <laughs> oh, well. Oh, you do as well? Yeah, okay, yeah, I play cool. Guitar as well. So, cool, um, cool. Um, yeah, I, I mean, microphone, I use an SM58. <laughs> That's about as far as it goes. Um, yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah, guitar wise, I've had a. Um, it's, I guess technically like a parts caster, like for a Strat. Um, I ended up buying all the bits off eBay. Um, there's like this one particular shop in America that just sells, they, I, I'm pretty sure they just buy guitars and just take them apart and sell the pieces separately. Um, and I did it at a time where the dollar was really cheap too, so <laughs> it worked out. Um, yeah, I've had a um, Strat for, uh, ooh gosh, best part of maybe 10 years now. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, play, I run that through a, um, either an orange rock of a, um, I think it's a Mark II 50 watt combo. Nice. Um, or if I'm traveling, I need to take the train somewhere, I'll take my uh, orange Tiny Terra. Just oh, cool. It's really small, portable. Yeah. Just makes it much easier. And then I'm always trying to keep up with this guy when it comes to pedals. So I have a slightly smaller array of pedals. Did you bring yours with you? You didn't bring your pedals. No, 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 I didn't bring So we can't show you a picture of that now, but imagine Ian's just smaller, <laughs> he says. Um, <laughs> what's, uh, what about you? Are you old school bass player or are you, you know, are you modern? So I'm always getting bullied about the size of my pedal box. I don't, I've got a whole two pedals compared to Ian's Ooh, kind of 50. You know, yeah. Um, so I've, I play a, a Squire jazz bass actually. Cool. Um, yeah, rocking which is, the Squire. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can't remember what it cost me now, but it was not very much. Yeah. But it sounds so good. Like people, not a bag, because it's definitely not my playing. People come up often and say, your bass sound, your tone's so good. And it's, Squire, what are you, what are you running through? Um, TC Electronic BH212. Yeah. Um, no, BH500, and then the cabinet is the 2B12. The um, it's numbers, I struggle with numbers. That's a great little rig. Um, really yeah, it's small good. and compact, it's nice and punchy, it? yeah. And, yeah, and relatively light to go looking yeah. about the place. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Come on, tell us what your two pedals are. So I'm I've intrigued. got the Sans Amp. Oh, yeah. For kind Base of the, DI thing. Yes, but I kind of at the moment I use it kind of just for like a grindier mm -hmm. kind of gravelly sound. In the future, I'd like to turn that into my main, tone it down a bit, make that kind of the main tone, mm -hmm. then get something to drive it and kind of get the, the more aggressive sound. Uh, and the other pedal is a tuner. There we are. Really that's where all the tone comes from. There's so much tone. So much yeah, tone. never change yeah. the tuner. And then people go, why? It, just, it didn't sound as good as last. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, I'm just not in tune anymore. Um, and drums, what are you using? So my main kit is uh, Yamaha Oak Custom. Very which nice. I got about 11 years ago yep. in a sale for 600 quid, which wow. is an amazing deal. And my dad got it for me. I didn't really know what I was getting at the time. I just knew Yamaha was a good brand, but it served me really well. Yeah. I've owned other kits during that time, but it's still my main one that I just keep coming back to. Um, just really punchy, nice attack, good for rock, uh, good for live stuff. Um, and then my snare is a Ludwig Superphonic. Cool. Uh, 14 by five, yeah. which is just really versatile. Good for most stuff, but cranked up, good for rock as well. Uh, and then I use Istanbul Agop cymbals. Okay. Yeah. So you're, just, you're, going, you're leaving the mainstream, the sort of, you know, going for the other. Wasn't he the, uh, wasn't he like the third Zildjian brother or something, wasn't he, the Istanbul guy? Yeah, it's something like that, but they okay. stayed in Turkey, whereas right. Zildjian and Sabian, well, Zildjian went to America, yeah. and then eventually it split into Sabian, which was in Canada. 
Um, but yeah, I love the Istanbul stuff. It's all handcrafted, less yeah. machine processing than a lot of the other companies. And yeah, just really dark and sit really well uh, in the mix with the band. So awesome. yeah, I like them. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, look, um, we're going to hear the guys play any second now. Um, these guys, we, we actually invited these guys in because we're uh, helping to sponsor a festival in uh, Guildford this September called Always the Sun, uh, which we'll put some details up at, at the end of the uh, end of this video. Cool festival across a Saturday and a Sunday, 10th and the 11th of September. You guys are playing on the Saturday, I think, aren't yes. you? Yeah. Look, we can do this. We hey. Can do this. Like low tech graphics. Whoa. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> um, and there's a couple of cool headline bands there as well. Mystery Jets are playing one night, Cheering Breaks are playing the other. There's a vicious rumor that uh, some of the YouTube presenters from Anderton's TV might have a band as well playing on the Sunday, but I, th <laughs> I think that is as yet unconfirmed. Um, but yeah, so these guys are going to try and do an acoustic version of one of their songs. And it's the first time you guys have attempted to do an acoustic version, yes. isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, um, cheers guys for coming in. No problem. Um, no if you've liked what you've heard and you want to go and find out some more, I'll put some links in the description below. But yeah, it's a band called A Tiptoe. Wish them all loads and loads of luck. Hope you make it, guys. It'll be awesome to see you playing Glastonbury or something at some point in the future. But in the meantime, <laughs> I look forward to seeing you at the festival as well. So, awesome. All right, guys. Thank cheers. You. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye separates you from the night. No respite from battling with this divide. We can't show you where your peace resides. Your body works relentlessly to keep you tired. Simple pledges come with underlying conditions. Not even you can comprehend or make provision. Dissipated, lost its wisdom Plan your life around sporadic bouts of feeling fine Just to find the second hurdle breaks your stride Told us once, told us all a thousand times You're sick to death of grappling with this vice Save yourself for what comes next. Save yourself for what comes next.